Hey guys, it's Miss Gallibert. Today our story is called When the Monkeys Came Back, written by Christine L. Franklin, illustrated by Robert Roth. And let's see if we have a clue on the back. No words, just a picture. So I wonder what's going to happen when the monkeys came back. Here we go. When when Doña Marta was a very little girl, the valley was a peaceful place. Children giggled as they chased each other between rows of tall corn. Fathers whistled as they dug into gardens. Mothers hummed softly as they wrapped black beans and cornmeal in banana leaves to cook. There was one old road in the valley, but it was an ox cart road, an open place for meeting friends or cousins a nice place for walking, a sunny place for catching lizards. There weren't any cars at all. The valley was a quiet place, except when the monkeys called. Every morning and every evening, for as long as anyone could remember, the monkeys announced the changing of night into day the changing of day into night. At dawn, they would howl and bark to one another, and the noise they would make was like thunder in the trees. At dusk, they would hoot and scream, and each leaf and each blade of grass would tremble from the sound. One day, a car chugged and sputtered up the old road. After that, more cars came, not many at first, for the road was an ox road, not a car road. Marta was afraid of the cars. The sound and smell made her hide behind her mother's skirt. More and more cars came, and trucks, and more noise. Before long, it wasn't safe to walk down the middle of the road, to stand and talk, to chase the quick lizards. Still, the monkeys shouted from the trees, drowning out all the new noises for a few moments each day, hooting to one another as they always had, waking up the world in the morning, calling the workers home from the fields at night. The rains came and went, and Marta's dress grew too short, and one day some men from the city came to Marta's house. They offered her father a lot of money, enough to buy six cows and a brand new dress for Marta, and asked to cut down some trees on the side of the mountain. Marta's father agreed, and from that day on, the forest began to disappear. At first, it was just a few trees. The lumbermen would cut down only the biggest trees, the ones with the hanging vines. The monkeys didn't seem to mind. They howled and barked and scolded just as before. But five years later, when there were only 24 trees left in the forest, the monkeys went away. Marta didn't know where the monkeys went. One night, just as the sun slipped behind the hills, the monkey shrieked and hooted and cried louder than ever before. Someone said it was because of the full moon. Others said the rainy season was near, but the next morning, the valley was as silent as a stone. Over the next several years, the last of the trees were cut down. What had once been a forest was now covered with stumps and tangled brush. There were a few birds, but no monkeys. Most people forgot about the monkeys. They had roosters to wake them up in the morning, lamps to work by at night, but Marta didn't forget. When she was 15 years old, Marta married Emilio. Emilio worked for Marta's father, and when her father died, he left the farm to Marta and Emilio. You have a lot of land now, said Marta one day. I would like to have some of it for myself. Emilio laughed out loud because in those days, 
women did not own land. Soon we will have a family to feed, said Emilio. After I plant corn and beans and squash, there will be nothing left over to give you. The rest of the land belongs to the cows. What about the land on the side of the mountain? asked Marta. There are too many stumps for a garden, and it is too steep for cows. That is true, agreed Emilio, and though it went against the custom, he gave the land on the side of the mountain to Marta. What are you going to do with that land? asked Emilio. I'm going to bring back the forest, said Marta, and that is what she did. Marta planted trees from the foot of the mountain to as far up as she could climb. When the sun baked the ground in the dry season, she hauled buckets of water to the trees. When the hard rains washed the little trees from the soil, she gently replanted them. Year after year, Marta took care of the trees. In the next 15 years, she gave birth to 11 children. Each child learned to plant and tend trees. Year after year, Marta's children grew tall, and so did the trees. Coffee grows well on the mountain, Emilio would tease. Maybe you could plant coffee on your land. But Marta didn't listen. She didn't change her mind, and the forest came back. Many more years passed. The trees grew higher and higher. Marta's children grew up and had children of their own. Emilio died and left the farm to Marta and her sons. One day, old Doña Marta took a walk along the road in the warm sunshine. The children greeted her as she passed. Good morning, tree lady, they said. Good morning, answered Doña Marta with a wink and an old, old smile. She leaned on her stick and stared across the valley. Her trees touched the sky. Thick vines wrapped around their trunk. Birds of every color filled their branches. Now, wherever they dropped their seeds, new trees would grow. The valley was bright with squash and corn and beans, but the side of the mountain was a deep, dark green, forest green. Doña March's work was finished. One night, Doña Marta couldn't sleep. As she lay in her bed, she listened to the sounds of insects, the twittering of the night birds. Out her little window, she watched the stars trail across the black sky. She watched the moon shadows shift and change in her room. As dawn approached, she heard the roosters begin to crow. And then she heard another sound. At first, it sounded like a barking of dogs, but soon, barking turned into howling, the howling into shrieks, the shrieks into shouts, and every leaf and every blade of grass trembled with sound. Doña Marta hobbled to the window and leaned out. The dark air thundered with the sound of the monkeys, hooting, hollering, screaming from the tops of the trees, waking the whole world once again. Doña Marta closed her eyes, smiled a wrinkled smile, and listened to the magic she had missed for 56 long years. Every morning now, old Doña Marta wakes up to the barking and scolding of the monkeys. Every evening she waits for them to gather in the trees to shriek and howl and say good night. For a few moments each morning and evening, the sound of the monkeys drowns out all of the other sounds in the valley. For a few moments each day, it's as if nothing had ever changed. The end, and the monkeys came back.